Hey, my YouTube family, I'm excited that we are starting a new series entitled The Signs of Life. Listen, U-turn, bridge crossing, stop. What sign is God speaking to you in this time right now in your life? We're praying for revelation, but we need you to be a part of it. Why? Because we're family right here on YouTube. I'm excited, I need you to be excited that God's about to give us revelation on the signs of life. I want you to get your Bibles and you're gonna to go to um, the book of Judges. And for everyone if, at this 12th third service, if you could do me a favor, if you can unplug from social media, if you give me a half an hour, I promise you God could shift your life. Um, there is a word from the Lord. So I was driving down the street one day and I began to look at the street signs. And the Lord said, pay attention because there's a word behind the signs. I then immediately text Pastor Jamon and Dr. Connor, and I says, I'm filling a series entitled The Signs of Life. And I sent them the stop sign. I sent them an image of the green light U-turn. I said, we need to go in prayer about which signs we need to speak on. And today we're going to speak on a sign entitled The Road Closed. In other words, something when a road is closed, that means that it, is, it used to have access to something that you cannot get to anymore. When a road is closed, it means it needs to be a detour. It might take you longer to get there, but you'll get there. The road is closed. Please listen to this. As long as you live on this earth, you're going to have some seasons in your life that you want the road to be closed. You don't want nobody to bother you. You don't want to be, you, watch me, you don't want your phone to ring. You don't want to hit nobody else's situation. If, can anybody relate to what I'm talking to? Come on here. You ain't loaning nobody nothing right now. The road is closed. If you could relate to what I'm talking about, open your mouth right now and say the road is closed. <laughs> this is good. You ready? So we're going to look at one of the judges by the name of Samson. He was predestined to be a judge. Please listen to this. What do you mean by predestined? Before he was even conceived, an angel appeared to his mother first and then to the father and both parents. It said to them, please listen, you are going to conceive and carry something that is going to be special. For everyone under the sound of my voice, and many of you all, I want you to hear me. You are not the norm. You have never been the norm. There's always been something different different about you. You are special and anointed by God. You are sitting next to somebody that is special, but forgot how special they are. Come on here. We're going to wake up something today. I need you to nudge the one to your right and your left and say, hey, 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 you are special. You ready? When the angel spoke to the parents, please listen, when you're special, you're not like everybody else. When the angel spoke to the parents, I said, now watch me, I need you to protect this special child that I'm about to give you. He will be set aside, everybody say the word set aside. Set aside as a Nazarite, which means that he cannot be like any of the other children. For many of you all, your parents were more strict on you. They were harder on you because there's something special in you. Mm. Can we talk for a minute? As a Nazarite, can I show you the rules that go with a Nazarite? Number one, you could not cut his hair. Number two, he is a Nazarite. He cannot have any strong drink. He can't have any Patron. He can't take any shots to the head. He can't go to happy hour. Some of y'all, you need to realize, alcohol will never agree with you because you're not supposed to have it. Y'all ain't got to say that to me. You get one shot, now you falling out. That means your behind shouldn't have it. Leave it alone. Number three about a Nazarite, you could not be around anything that is dead. This is why some of y'all, you hate being around dead people, people who are not going anywhere, people who are not doing anything. Even when you come to church, you cannot stand to sit in a dead section. You have to be around life. You got you to gotta be around somebody who has a pulse, somebody who believes that eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard what God has in store for you. Can you check to make sure that you're not sitting next to anything dead? I mean, when I say, you watch me, watch me, when I can say holly, you say hallelujah. When I say glory, you say to God. The second thing that the angel announced 
is that this child that you're going to carry, destiny has already been set. Destiny has already been set. Please pay attention to this. Announce it in Judges 13 and 7. He's, the angel said, he will take the lead. Nobody's going to have to hand him anything. He's going to take the lead. Whenever he walk in a room, he's going to change the temperature of the room. Because he takes the lead. People will look to you for an answer when you ask me why. Because you take the lead. You might be the youngest, but you're the leader. Come on here. He will take the lead, here's the line, in delivering Israel from the hands of the Philistines. He's not going to wait on anybody to deliver him. He's going to take the lead. And some of y'all, I need you to stop apologizing for being a leader. Come on here. Stop apologizing for being a thug in the spirit. Stop apologizing for having the answer. Stop apologizing for not being defeated like everybody else is defeated. Stop apologizing for the praise that God has locked up in. Come on here. I need you to nudge the one to your right and your left. Say, take the lead. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it on your job. Take it in your house. Take it, take it, take it, take it in. The, take it on your road that you're sitting on. Don't wait on somebody to give God glory. You take the lead. If they don't open their mouth, you open. Now, here's the line I want you to get for those of us that are leaders. In Judges 13 and 24, because after God speaks it, it has to come to pass. His words cannot return unto your void. So just like God spoke to the parents before the child was even conceived, then when, when the child is born, please watch this Bible. In Judges 13, 24, the woman gave birth, the woman gave birth, the woman gave birth to a boy. Gave birth to a boy. And named him Samson. Here's what I want you to get. He grew. And the Lord blessed him. Why was he blessed? Here's the line. Ready? And the spirit of the Lord began. Can I tell you, I've been preaching this. That's to say it. I've been preaching this, but never paid attention to this. And the spirit of the Lord began to stir him. Stir him. In other words, you walk into a situation and things just start stirring. And the Spirit of the Lord began to stir him. And the Spirit of the Lord began to stir him. Watch me. He didn't wait on people. The Spirit of the Lord began to stir him. For some of y'all, he stirred you towards your gift. He stirred you towards your assignment. You didn't ask for it. You were stirred into it. <laughs> and whenever the Spirit stir you, you are guaranteed to be victorious. I'm going to say that one more time because some of y'all didn't get it. Whenever the Spirit stir you, you are guaranteed to be... Every victory you have is because the Spirit gave it to you. Uh, some of y'all don't get it. You don't get it? You don't get it? You don't get it? This is not your degree. This is not your hookup. This is not who, who got your back. God got your back. Every accomplishment you had, watch me, the Spirit gave it to you. Those of y'all that know that you didn't do it, watch me, you graduated, you ain't that smart. Yo, come on here. You got a job? Yep, God gave it to me. Every blessing you have, every accomplishment you have, this ain't you, this is God's stirring on the inside of you. Let's talk for one minute because I got to explain this. I got to explain this. Hmm. So he, he's growing and the spirit starts stirring and when the spirit starts stirring, he's basically making room for your road to be open. So, so certain victories begin to make room for a road to be created for you to go down. For example, there's one line that you're going to read three times when you, when you study Samson. The Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him. So whenever he got in a situation, the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him. You ready? Watch this. A lion jumped out of him at, at one time. Something unexpected hit him. 
and he grabbed the lion and killed it. Why? Because the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him. I'm talking to you killers out here. That something jumped out on you that was intended to kill you, but you killed it. Ain't nobody going to say nothing to me? How did you kill it? The Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him. Depression tried to take you out, but you killed it. Abandonment tried to take you out, but you killed it. Some things tried to hit you, but you killed it. I need you to make sure you sit next to another slayer. Come on, touch your name and say, you killed it, you killed it. Not only did you kill it, you paid it. He had a situation that he had a debt that needed to be paid. He, didn't, he entered into an agreement with some people and he had to pay a debt. And some of y'all, how did you pay it? The Spirit of the Lord had to give you the wisdom to pay it. Wait a minute, what do you mean? If you really add up your bills and then look at your check stub, your check stub don't match your bills, but all your bills seem to be paid. Y'all gonna sit here, watch me, watch me. How you get a house? The Spirit gave it to me. How you get a car? The Spirit gave it to me. All my bills are paid. I'm debt free. I got a cash anointing. How you get it? Because the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon you. Come on, look at someone and say, I paid it. I paid it. Come on, y'all. Hold your head up. Say, I killed it and I paid it. Come on, look at somebody and say, I killed it and I paid it. That's my testimony. I got a track record. Come on, I'm trying to move on. And the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him. And the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him. Watch me. His back is against the wall. The Philistines have come to get him. The Israelites tie him up and turn him over. He told the Israelites, make me one promise that you won't kill me. Turn me over to them and watch God be God. They literally tied him up and turned him over to the enemy. I feel sorry for people that think that you've been set up for failure. Because just as soon as you expect me to die, I live. Come on, let's go. They tied him up. Pay attention. They tied him up and they walked him out. And the Bible says, and the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him. He broke the ropes that were holding him. He reached down, watch me, he saw the jawbone of a jackass. He grabbed the jawbone, a jawbone, a jawbone, something that nobody else would ever grab. Isn't it amazing how God give you victory in areas that nobody else had victory with? He grabs the jawbone of a jackass and he just starts slinging it. When he gets some sling it, he kills a thousand Philistines, which means what? He conquered it. Can I tell you something? There's some things that you conquered that nobody did it for you but God. Oh, y'all sitting here looking at me like I'm crazy. I can't stand some of y'all. When I look at you, you killed it, you paid it, and you conquered it. When I look at you, you killed it, you killed it, boo. You paid it, you paid it. People ask you, where'd you get, your, where'd you get that outfit from? I paid for it. You didn't have to sleep with nobody to get your rent paid. You didn't have to sell nothing to get your bills paid. Everything I have, God gave it to me. I killed it, I paid it, I conquered it. I feel like having a testimony service and only ones that can testify is those of you all that know that nobody did it but God. This ain't your education, this ain't your job, this ain't your resume, this is the spirit of the living God. I need you to get ready to testify. Watch me, if he did it for you, there should be a praise that matched what he did. Wait, 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 I killed it, y'all ain't saying that to me, I paid it, y'all ain't saying that to me, and I conquered it. When I get to the area that you can identify with, I need you to put a praise behind it. I killed it, y'all ain't saying nothing, I paid it, y'all ain't saying nothing, I conquered it. I killed it, I paid it, I conquered it. I killed it. Giving honor to God, who's the head of my life. I want to thank God for being saved, sanctified. Filled with the promise gift of the Holy Ghost. I came to let everybody know I killed it. I paid it. Come on, on your way to your seat. That's where people say, God did it for me. God. God did it. God did it. God did it. God did it. How you go to college? God did it. How you get that job? God did it. How you drive that car? God did it. I 
killed it. I paid it. I paid for it in prayer. I paid for it in prayer. I paid for it in prayer. I paid for it with my tears. Come on, on your way to your seat. Touch the people to say, I killed it. Touch the second person and say, I paid it. Touch the third person and say, and I conquered it. Sit down. Road open. Road is open. Road is open. The road is open. The road is open. The road is open. The road is open. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Can I get that seat? Can I get that chair? Give me a, give me a seat. <laughs> Some of y'all that mess around and forgot what you killed. Some of y'all that mess around and forgot what you paid. Some of y'all that mess around and forgot what God let you conquer. This I recall to my mind, therefore I have a hope. It is of the Lord's mercy that I am not dead. Great is thy faithfulness. Those of you that know that God's been faithful. I still don't like the way some of y'all look at You sitting there like you did it. I need you to release a praise like God did it. Come on, look at three people to tell them, you ready? You ready? You got a degree, so do. Didn't nobody do it but God. You got your own house, so do. You got a contract, yep. you sit like that because you don't know what I went through to get the seat that I got some of y'all think that I just popped up and got the seat but I couldn't get the seat until I killed it I couldn't get the seat until I you didn't hear what I just said people think you just popped up you looking at my reaping season but you don't know my sowing record I gotta break that down. I gotta break that down. Sit 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 down. You ready? So although it had been predestined that he would take the lead, you can't take the lead until you accomplish some certain things. What do you mean? After he has slain the lion, after he has paid the debt, after he has slayed a thousand Philistines and he's conquered it, then the Bible says the road is open. What do you mean? Bible. In verse, in verse, in verse um, 20, Samson led Israel for how many years? 20 years. For 20 years in the days of the... Well, you are sitting in the seat. A lot of people want the seat, but you can't have the seat until you kill something. You want the seat, but you can't have the seat until you paid for something. You want the seat, but you have, watch me, we don't see nothing that you've conquered. You cannot sit in the seat until we see a track record around your name. I need to see some dead bodies around you. I need to see generational curses broken. I need to see God shift you. You cannot have the seat until you have victories. Wait, 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 wait. So this is why. This is why people hate to see you sit in this seat. But they'll never do what you did to get the seat. 
and you're going to mess around and let somebody who never had the seat tell you how to act in the seat. I just don't think that you should be making all that noise. I don't think that it take all of that. Can I tell you something? It don't take all that for you because you don't have the seat. But now that I finally got the seat, those of you that are grateful that God marked your life, I need to, I need to hear what a praise sound like from your seat. You're the one that got the gift. Come on, tell somebody and tell them, you're it. You're it. You're the leader of your family. You're the leader of your friends. You're the leader in your house. You're the leader in your section. You set it off. Sit down, killer. Sit down, killer. Sit down, killer. Sit down, conqueror. I don't think you deserve it. I'm so glad you don't determine it. Favor ain't fair. Sometimes I look at the seat and I say I don't deserve it. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus, this is why I can't be arrogant. Come on, are you ready to see? Tell somebody, he's done so much for me. I can't even tell it all. Come on, y'all. Faith ain't fair. You're not perfect, but he's got the seat. Why y'all making me preach so hard? What have I done to you? Come on, come on, touch him, say, take your seat, take your seat. Protect your seat. Come on, tell him, protect your seat. Protect your seat, 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 protect your seat. People don't want you, they want your seat. There's some people that just hate to see you sitting in the seat. Can I tell you something? You got to hear me now. They'll never do what you do, but they don't like seeing you do what you do. <laughs> They'll never make the sacrifices that you've made. They'll never put up with what you put up with. They'll never fight what you fight. They'll never kill what you kill. They'll never pay what you pay. They'll never conquer what you conquered, but they just don't like the fact that you sit in the seat. So sit in it. And when you sit in it, I'm going to need you to protect it. Never get to the point that you think, oh, I got this. Because the devil goes to and fro seeking whom he may devour. As long as you sit in this seat, you are a target of the enemy. Because you represent deliverance. Every time the enemy look at you, he get mad. Because when he look at you, you slip through every trap that the enemy set. And then you won't just sit down and shut your mouth. Every now and then you jump up and start dancing around the seat. Sit down. Sit in your seat. Sit in your seat. Ready? Let's go. You have to guard your seat. Because the enemy is going to come after it. He's going to come out. He, why, why does he come after you? Because as long as you live, I need you to hear me. People, their deliverance 
their freedom, their necks is locked up in you. So if I kill you, I kill a nation. If I kill you, I kill every employee that go with your business. If I shut you down, I shut down everybody that's in your ministry. Touch them and say, I'm gonna need you to protect your seat. So how does he get closed? How does he get closed? Because he dropped his guards. And I need you to hear me now. You can't get that comfortable. In the 16th chapter, the Bible says, and Samson loved a woman by the name of Delilah. Come on, we're going to go here now. And this relationship, this relationship caused the road to be closed. See, see, I'm out here now in front of y'all. Nothing's blocking me. What do you do when the enemy take your seat and put it behind here? And then put up different barriers to make sure that nobody can get to you. And the question is, how did the road end up getting closed? And I can promise you, most of the time, the road gets closed with who you entered into relationships with. Come on, don't, don't, don't stop shouting now. Don't stop shouting now. Because when you, watch me, when, you, when you've killed something, when you've killed something, when you've paid something, and when you've conquered something, it makes you look more attractive. Now, nobody, hey, come on, uh, success is attractive. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. Success, uh, accomplishments make you really look better than what you look like. Remove your success and you just a regular person. But since there's favor on you, since there's oil on you, since there's a calling on your life, when people look at you, they don't really see you, they see your glory. And he fell in love with a woman named Delilah. And Delilah allowed some things to enter into the ring. In other words, I'm going to give you three things that cause you your road to close. Number one, it becomes a power play over you. What do you mean? See, who you are, people need to want to feel as if they control you. This is why you got to be careful with who you date. Because some people want to control your every move. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me now. Some of y'all ain't saying nothing because the controller's sitting next to you. I don't care. <laughs> they don't want God. They ain't here trying to control your shout. You should break free while you... <laughs> I'm going to church with you. Come on. I hope God knock your behind out. Watch me. It became a power struggle, a power struggle. And I need you to see the power. See, some of y'all, because you're so anointed, people, they will never be powerful until they break you down. In order for them to feel elevated, they got to tear you down and stand on top of you to appear to be tall. But the devil is a liar. I want to show you. Let's, let me show you. The rulers of the Philistines went to Delilah and said to her, see if you can lure him into showing us the secret of his of uh, the secret of his great strength. Here it is. And how we can overpower him so, he, so that we might tie him up and subdue him. So it's a power play. And the whole power is to break you down. It'll blow your mind because you're just, you're just in love. But they don't love you. They're just trying to subdue you. Because they want to call everybody and say, look who I got. Mm, come on, y'all. Never be somebody's trophy. You do more than pose. Y'all ain't saying that to me. I kill it. Y'all ain't saying that to me. I pay it. Y'all ain't saying that to me. I conquer it. I'm not your trophy. You blessed by being next to me. The next thing that we see that they get them with, ready? Have a seat. 
They caused him to go back there. It's money. Money. Can I tell you something? Your gift, your calling is so great, you can't put a price tag on it. You could tip me, but you can't afford me. Y'all ain't saying that to me now. That is not arrogance. That's confidence in God. See, I don't cast my pearls to swine. I don't sleep with dogs because dogs have fleas and I ain't itching. It becomes a money thing. It becomes a money thing. It becomes a money thing. Touch the neighbor and say, you cannot be bought. Come on, touch the neighbor and say, your favor is too expensive. Come on, tell somebody, no one can afford your presence. This Bible is messing me up. Look what they said. Look what they said. Each one of us, each one of us, each one of us, each one of us. That's how valuable you are. It's going to take a couple of people to try to shut you down. Each one of us will give you 1,100 shekels of silver. Each one of us. So now, watch me. People think that they can pay you off. Somebody think, well, if I buy you a car, then you'll be mine. Yep. But guess what? Whose name is on the, lead, on the deed? Y'all ain't going to say that to me? If I, give you, if I get you an apartment, but it's my name on the, on the lease. Because when you get mad, you're going to try to put me out. Y'all ain't gonna say that to me? You can't pay me to fall in love with you. My anointing is too expensive. Y'all ain't gonna say that to me? Y'all ain't gonna say that to me? Just because you bought me something don't mean I'm gonna sleep with you. Y'all ain't gonna say that to me? Mom, come on here. Your body is more, worth more than a weave. Come on here. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Your destiny is more expensive than getting one hood rat. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me? You gotta do more than twerk to get with me. Trying to tell somebody, don't let, don't let the power play shut you down. Trying to tell somebody else, don't let the money shut you down. I'm going to mess y'all up real good right now. And say, whatever you do, don't let the sex shut you down. Is it still good to you? This is when it get quiet a little bit. <laughs> Tip, we out here now. We out here now, Tip. Touch it and say, we out here now. So let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. Ready? Okay, Lord, I'm going to need you really, really, because we're about to talk about sex. So, God, I'm going to need you to give me the revelation on how to break this down right here, okay? Mm -hmm. I got that leg stuck out there. Look at here, God. So, just because you're anointed does not mean that you don't have desires. Just because you're predestined, don't forget you're still wrapped up in this flesh. And this flesh has needs. So you're going to have to control what you choose to be served on a platter to you. You got to be like the three Hebrew boys. They refuse to eat the king's meat. No drink is wine. So everybody that presented to you don't mean that it's for you. Because when you get in the bed, you don't just get in the bed with your flesh. You get in the bed with your future. You get in the bed with your assignment. You get in the bed with your favor. So really, you don't want me, you want my favor. You really don't want me, you want the oil that is on my life. You think that if you sleep with me, you're going to lock me down. So... So she go there and she's like, bruh, tell me where your secret lies. He didn't tell her. And she, she didn't give him none. She 
said, I'm going to ask you again. Where your secret lie? And he lied. And she didn't give him nothing. She came back a third time. You playing with me? Samson, tell me where your secret lies. Nah. <laughs> you know, Chris Brown say these poops ain't loyal. I can't, uh. You got to read your Bible. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you a little revelation. And he lied again and didn't tell her. She didn't give him none. Watch this. Bible. She pressed him daily. You're not going to get out of my presence. I'm going to keep up with you and I'm going to keep pressuring you until I weigh you down, until you give me what I want. There's another power play. And she pressed him daily until finally he told her where his secret lies. After he told her, she gave him something. And she didn't just give him something. She knocked him out. You don't believe me, do you? Can I give you the Bible if you don't mind? She went in there and put a freaking dress on. She slid up in that room, grinding on that grind. Listen. She did that lap dance. That before she could get up, him to sleep on her lap she knocked that mark out some of y'all sitting here you ain't gonna answer me have you ever had somebody to put you to sleep don't you answer that don't you answer that don't you, answer that. Don't you raise your hand you better take you some no-dos. You better raise. And as a result of that road close, road close, how do you know the road is closed? How do you know the road is closed? Now, here comes here come, here come the revelation. Because you're not flowing the way you normally flow. She woke him up and said, bring it up on scripture. Samson, Samson, the Philistines be upon you. He said, I'll get up and go out and I'll shake myself as I did before. Watch me. He knew not that the Lord had departed. In other words, you have been doing the same thing that you normally do, but you're not getting the same results. <laughs> Nothing's changed. You've been doing what you normally do, but you're not getting the same results. You're still a business owner, but you, you do what you normally do, but you're not getting the results. You're singing, but you're not getting the results. You're preaching, but you're not getting the results. So what's going on with you? Now, now I'm going to need you to pay attention because I'm going to give you five things that can show you that your road is closed. Bring it up. Bring up the next one. Can you give me the scripture first? Let's do the scripture first. I need to read it. Then she calls him, uh-uh, uh-uh. And they gouge out his eyes. I want that scripture. Then they seize him. Everybody say, seize him. Gouge out his eyes. Say, gouge out. Then say, took him down. Say, took him down. They took him down to gouge. And then the next thing, they, they bind him with bronze. Say, binding him. And then they set him grinding grain in the prison. Come on, say grinding grain. So here, here, here go the five things to let you know that your road is closed. Bring them up on the screen now. Ready? Number one, the Bible says, and they seized him. When they seize you, that means that you've lost control. That means that you don't control it, but it controls you. It literally has you. And some of y'all, there's some things going on in your life. You don't control it. It literally has you under its control. 
You hear me? The second thing that they do is they gouge your eyes out. When they gouge your eyes out, watch me, that means that you can't see the way that you need to see. You can't even see that you're off right now. You cannot see the one that you're with. Don't mean you're any good. You cannot see how to get out of the situation that you're in. You are literally blind to what you are presently in. The third thing that they did is that they took him down to Gaza. They did not take him to the Mount Sinai. They took him down. And for many of you all, you are in a low place. What do you mean low place? That, watch me. You've never been depressed. You've never been this low before. You are struggling to get up. You are in a low place. You do your best to smile. You do your best to give God glory. You do your best to be good at what you do, but you are in a low place. And it takes a mature person to admit that I am not my norm. The next thing that they did was that what they did, what they binded him with. That is bondage. There's certain things that the enemy began to give you to hold you down. You used to smoke one cigarette, now you're smoking a whole pack. You used to take one, a glass of wine, now you're drinking the whole bottle. You used to just have an edible, but now you're smoking blunts and you're going further and further and it becomes bondage to you. So now you can't sleep until you drink. Now you have to do something to make you feel normal again. But when the high lift, you back in the same situation that you were in. And the next thing I want you to do is number five. He is now grinding. What does that mean? What used to be easy is now difficult. It used to be easy to get up out the bed. Now it's hard for you to get up. It used to be easy to go to work. Now it's hard for you to go to work. It used to be easy to come to church. Now it's difficult to come to church. It used to be easy to lift your hands. Now it's difficult to lift your hands. It used to be easy to operate in your gift now it is hard for you to operate in your gift and it's a part of you that feel like you are off and you're grinding and you cannot see and you are in bondage and you are in a low place and you are out of control now I need you to listen to me and the worst thing to do is act like you good because in church we taught you how to be a hypocrite and the only way that you can get free is that you must admit that your road is closed. Ready? I was here. Pastoring, road closed. Look at me. I was here. How did I get there? Two things. It was love and trust. I love too hard. I trust people that never should have been trusted. Am I the only one? Please, if, please let me know I'm not by myself. Don't y'all leave me out here and make me feel like I'm on an island by myself. Have you ever loved some people? And watch me, and you think they love you, but until you start saying no, then they walk out on you? Have you ever trusted some people that were only with you to get your secret? And when that road is closed, you're not flowing. And the only way you feel good about yourself is when you're able to flow. When you're able to flow, when you're able to flow, everybody sit to your feet, sit to your feet. And on your way up, can you tell somebody, your road is about to be open. Everybody listen to me. Why did he pick you knowing that you had issues? Why did he pick you knowing that you were struggling? Because he knew that he could use your struggle for his glory. <laughs> I need you to hear me. So how do you get out? How do you get out? Anybody can say, well, it's just over. Anybody can look up here and just say, you know what? It's a wrap. It's done. You're not going to judge them. Like, no, no. God's not done with you yet. Yeah. Question, so how do you get out? How do you get out? Number one, it starts with self. I need you to hear me now. You have to see your progress. You have to see your progress. Bible says, and his hair began to grow again. Felicia, what does that mean? In other words, I see improvement. Look at me. Is there anybody in the sound of my voice? I'm not perfect, but I see improvement. Uh, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Improvement how? I used to think I was right. Improvement is when I could see I wasn't right in that situation. Improvement is when you can admit, I fell in love with a fool. Improvement is when you can admit, I know God told me not to do it. I still don't like the way some of y'all looking because you sit there like, nah. Look at me. Improvement is when you can admit, there's no good thing in my flesh. Improvement is when I can admit, watch me, 
Watch me, watch me, watch me. That I am literally getting stronger. I used to fall for you every time you came around. But oh, my hair is growing. And I don't jump to your every call. I don't. Can I get some of y'all that see improvement in your life? Can you just clap your hands and say, God, thank God my hair is growing. I'm going to tell you to do something that's totally crazy right now. I want you to reach over and just, just touch through and touch through, say, help me. Help me. Help me. Touch somebody and say, help me get out of this. Hey, window, help me get out of this. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Help me. Help me. I used to do everything on my own, but I'm at a place in my life that I need help. If you study scripture, the Bible said when he killed the lion, he killed the lion by himself. When he, when he, when he paid the debt, he killed 30 Philistines by himself. When he killed a thousand, he killed them by himself. But now he's in a place that he can't do it by himself, that he needs help. And the Bible says he reached for a servant. Bring this part up. You're going to need somebody who can do what you can't do. You need somebody who can see what you can't see. And Samson said to the servant, who held this hand? Who held this hand? Who held this hand? And you never had to reach for anybody to hold you before. But you're at a place right now, you need somebody who's stronger than you. You need somebody who can help you get to where God is trying to take you. I don't just need to be next to anybody in church. I need to be next to somebody who can help me get where God is trying to take me. Please look at the one on your right and your left and ask him, can you please help me? Put me where I can feel the pillars. I need you to help me get to a place that I can do what I do. I need you to help me get to a place that I can do what I do. I need you to help me get to a place that I can do what I do. Put me where I can feel the pillars that support my assignment so that I can just lean on them. I just need to lean on it because if I can lean on it, I can feel the weight of it. And if I feel the weight of it, then I can know that God can get glorified out of this situation. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. So number one, you see how you've grown. Number two, you reach for help. Third thing you got to do, you got to cry out for help. You got to hear me. Only God. Mm. I need you to hear me, please. Because at this 1230 service, there's some of you all, the enemy just wants you to give up. But you've acknowledged that your hair is growing. You're in here, which means, Pastor Hannah, I'm here because I need you to help me. So now, only thing we got to do now is cry out to God. So watch the, watch the prayer. Watch the prayer. Watch the prayer. Watch the prayer. When he cries, he say, then Samson prayed to the Lord. Notice the first words out of his mouth. Sovereign Lord, stop. Stop right there. See, the enemy want to make you think that you messed up and that God is completely off the throne and not paying you any attention. If you look at the word sovereign, at the end of that word is reign. And I came to tell you, do you still believe that he reigns over your future? Do you still believe that he could overturn your situation? If you know that you, if you believe that, oh my forget, say sovereign Lord. The second part of his prayer say, remember me? What does that mean? I got a track record with you. Remember, I'm the one that killed it. Remember, I'm the one that paid it. Remember, I'm the one that conquered it. How many of y'all in the building, you have a testimony of being a survivor? Come on here. You've made it through some things already. Come on, y'all. He's familiar with your voice. He knows you better than you even believe that he know you. Come on, lift your hands and tell the Lord, remember me. And the only way I can get out of here is that you strengthen me. And I need enough strength that with one blow, what does that mean? Can I go to one service and shout one time and my whole situation turn? 
can I come to the altar one time and what used to have me for 10 years flip in 10 minutes can I pray in tongues one time and the one times I pray in tongues my situation turned for the better do me a favor on your right and your left tell your neighbor I'm going to need you to help me push Yay. okay ready here we go there's some of y'all in the building that I know it's almost like I've been preaching your life. You literally feel as if your road is closed and that nothing's working out for you. But what if I told you the day is the day that God says, I'm about to, it didn't make let's, let's, talk, let's talk divine timing. Let's talk divine timing. I brought you to an unusual Sunday. There are only three of them in a year called Fifth Sundays. And I got you to a Fifth Sunday at the end of another month, right before you cross over into the next month. Because I'm about to flip your road situation. Come on, y'all. If, if you don't believe nothing else I said, I need you to give God a praise for divine timing. Go, 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 go. Now, some of you all, watch me. Yours is a 911 situation. Don't play with me. Don't act like you're good. You're not in a good space. Get out of your seat and meet me on the altar. I need you to come like it's a 911 situation. Move fast. Move fast. Get ready to push. 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 Get up here. Get up here. Get up here. Get up here. Come on, say, remember me. remember me. Come on, say, help me. help me. Come on, say, strengthen me. Come on, say it again. Say, remember me. Come on, say, help me. Come on, say, strengthen me. It all see. Shine on the Lord. Come on, say it again. Say, re say, remember me. Help me. Come on, ask God to str strengthen me to get out of this situation. Now I'm going to need you to reach over and grab your neighbor by the hand. Hold that hand. Hold that hand. Put a demand on them. Say, don't you let me go. Until the road is open. Come on, don't you let me go. Look at me. You ready? I need you to hear me. I need you to hear me. Please, can you listen to me? Because I always appear to be strong. Every week I come in here and I preach to you, I seem like everything is together. You have no idea. Sometimes, sometimes it's not together, but I have to push. I can't wake up on a Sunday and say, I'm not going. I can't wake up on a weekday and say, I can't complete my assignment. I have to push. And God's about to give you the strength you need to push to raise your children, to push to be a survivor, to push to get your hair back again, to push to be who he created you to be. Squeeze that hand. Say, don't you let me go. Don't you let me go. Don't you let me go. Look at me. I need to show you this because I need to kill something real quick. I want you to see when the road opened. When the road opened, bring this up. Samson said, I need to, I need to, because some of y'all, you've been asking God to let you die. 
And I need, to, I, need, I need to stop you right here. This is not your example. Because I need you to understand what he's really praying. When he said, Lord, he said, let me die with the Philistines. What he's basically saying is, I want to die doing your will. Let me, let my last breath be doing what you called me to do. Quitting in the middle of it is not an option. Come on, squeeze that hand. Say, you're going to have to help me push. Can you do me a favor? I need to cancel something if you don't mind. Squeeze that hand and tell him you're not dying anytime soon. Squeeze that hand and tell him you're going to live a long, healthy, anointed, prosperous life. Squeeze that hand and say, you're going to live. 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 You're not going to get gunned down in the street. You're not going to have an accident. You're not dying anytime soon. You're going to live. If you ever obeyed me, obey me now. Shut the enemy down. Squeeze that hand again and say, I decree and I declare, you shall live. Then he pushed. Then he pushed with all his might. And down came the temple of the rulers and all the people. Here's the line I want you to get. Thus he killed many more when he died which means that your ladder is going to be greater. That when you leave here, your push is about to pay off. Hold that hand. Hold that hand. Hold the music. A strong anointing is about to come in here. Strong anointing is about to come in here. And you're about to get a second win. Mm. Mm. You're about to get a second win. And you're about to be successful. I hear the Lord. I'm about to put you back in your seat. Get up, my Shake it. Hear the word of the Lord. You thought that you had messed your seat up, that you could not get it again. But hear the word of the Lord. I've kept the seat open for you because I knew that you had an appointment with me on the fifth Sunday of this month. And I knew that you would push to get here. And I was going to honor your push. And even in your praise right now, I'm about to open a door for you in this quarter of this year. So within the next two months, you're about to see God do the supernatural for you. Hold that hand and tell him I need you to get ready to help me push in a praise, in a praise. Do you hear me talking to you? Don't you let me go. Don't you let me go until we get a breakthrough. On the count of three, you're gonna open your mouth and release a praise. Give it all your might. Give it all your strength. One, two, three, go. Push. 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 Fight. Push. Glory oh, to God. Push. Hey, bruh, open your mouth. Push. Keep getting up. Keep living. Keep doing you. Keep being creative. Push. Push. Push to raise your children. Push to run your business. Push to do your ministry. Push. Give it all your might. Give it everything you got. We almost done. But I feel another push in the building. But I feel another push in the building. 
but I feel another push in the building. Do me a favor. Let that hand go. Go find one more person and grab them by their hand and say, help me push. Spirit of the living God. 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 The anointing of God. The yoke destroying anointing. The power of God. Let the God that answer my fire. Let the God that answer my fire. Let the God that answer my fire. Push. You ready? Get ready to release another praise. If you don't know what to say, open your mouth and shout glory. One, two, three. Push. Push. You got to get up. You have to raise your children. You must live. You cannot die here. You cannot live in depression. You got to get up. Your latter days are going to be greater. You're not. Come on. Shake the hands and three people to tell them, I command you to live. I command you to do what God called you to do. I command you to be who God created you to be. I command you to live. Do it. Come on on your way back to your seat. Say it violently. Do it. Be it. You shall live. You got this. You got this. You got this. You got this. You are doing it for this. You called to kill it. Come on, y'all. We got to get ready to go. Hug somebody and tell them, you got this. Your ladder will be greater. You got this. You're more than a conqueror. You got this. The devil should have killed you when he had a chance. You got this. You got this. You can handle this. You can deal with the weight of this. Don't leave this building. You got this. Come on, y'all. I need you to be anointed. You don't know what they've been dealing with. But when you touch them, you stir that thing back up in them. Some of y'all know their name. I need you to call their name and tell them, hey, Hey, Jeff, you got this. Hey, Natasha, you got this. Say their name. Say their name. You got this. You got this. Never seen the righteous for second. Hey Natasha, you got this. 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 You need to keep hearing that. You got this. You got this. Hey Jeremy, you got this. Hey Jeremy, you got this. Hey Jeremy, you got this. Hey Alan, you got this. Ask the one standing next to you, what's your name? Because I'm about to call your name. And when I call your name, God wants to give you the strength you need. Get out my shade. Lisa. 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 Hey, Lisa. Hey, Lisa. Lisa. Say that name. Cedric. 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 He's done too much for you. Cedric. He's been there every step of the way. Cedric. You got this. You. Hold on. Some of y'all.
y'all playing with it. When I'm telling you, your deliverance is locked up in them. You got to put a demand on them like you need God to do a miracle. Please don't play with me. I need you to grab that hand because you're going to say their name. 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 Don't play with me. Hold that hand and call their name. Come on, tell them you got this. Come on, you got this. You got this. The strength of God. Strength the of God. strength of God. Come on, don't play with me. Strength of God. You can't leave it away. You can't. The strength of God. Strength of God. The strength of God. The strength of God. The strength of God. Strength you got this. You got this. You shall live and not die. You shall live and not die. You shall live and not die. You should be everything he created you to be. You should do what he called you to do. Your name is about to be brought up. A door is about to open. You gonna see God. You gonna see God. You gonna see God. You gonna see God. I wish you had somebody that could travail with you. I wish you had a pit bull standing next to you. I wish you were standing next to a warrior. Glory God. Grab that hand again and tell him, you got this. You got this. I dare you to push. Oh. Oh. Glory, 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 glory. Greater is he. Come on, we got to go. I know. I know you're tired, but grab that hand again. I'm not playing with you. You got too many testimonies to give up on God now. You've been through the storm. You've been through the rain. You've been through the fire. You've been after test after test. You made it. One last push, and we out of here. One last push, and we out of here. One last push, and we out of here. Push in praise. One, two, three, go. strong enough he can trust you with it Jesus. you strong enough Jesus. you can deal with it Jesus. you strong enough Jesus. you can handle it Jesus. I need you to start encouraging yourself open your mouth and say I got this I got this
my children. Yes, God. I got my purpose. Oh, I, got I got my destiny. Oh, I, got I got my assignment. Oh, I, got I got this. I got this. Everybody that know God got an assignment on your life. Open your mouth and shout, I got this. Oh, I got this. Yeah. Lift your hands and let me hear your worship. I need to hear your worship. I need to hear your worship. Greater is he that is within you. Come on, lift your hands and say, I got this. I know it looked like you were defeated, but God's about to give you another push. There are about 15 of you that I came to get because the road has been closed. And the Lord said, if you let me in, I'll come in and flip this whole situation. It's not just the Lord you got to let in. You got to let the right people in who can help you, who see the favor on your life and not intimidated and not scared of it. If you know I'm talking to you, get out of your seat and walk towards me right now. Move. Move. Get out of your seat and come and stay here. Stand right here. Move. Just stand right here. Move. 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 It I must She under la move. 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 Get out of your seat and get up here like it's an emergency. It's an emergency. Get out of your seat. Here they come. Move. 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 Keep praying in the Holy Ghost. You got this, you got this, you got this. Jesus. Count for me, let me know how many I got. Jesus, 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 Jesus. I'm in. Everybody will say, I got this. I got this. Hmm. Why would he give you something and let you fail? Just because you're under pressure right now don't mean it's over for you. You cannot get oil until it's pressed. What if I told you your next, this pressure that you're under is supposed to produce your next push? Come on, open your mouth and say, I got this. Come on. Those on the altar, I want you to turn around. You're going to follow these people down this aisle. Follow him. 
Be careful of the body in the aisle. Amen. Step over the person. Leave her down there. Everyone have a seat and give God a praise for souls. Everybody just lift your hands and just say yes, Lord. Come on, leave your hands up. Close your eyes for a minute. I know what it, I know I feel you. And I never want you to think that you're the only one that feel this thing. One of the best scriptures that you can read is on the talents. Let me see. He said he gave each of them according to their ability. Which means that if God gives you something, he knows that you have the ability to handle it. Ability does, does not just mean that you do it. That means that you can handle the pressure that go with it. And everybody that's been under any form of pressure, lift your hands and say, God, I want to thank you. God, I want to thank you. That you give me the strength to push. Give me the strength to push. And I got this. And I got this. You got it. You have the patience to raise these kids. He's going to give you all the resources you need. You have what it takes to do the business that you do. You have everything to go with the gift that he gave you. I'm going to say that again. You have everything to go with the gift that he gave you. You just have to, it has to be revealed to you. Pay attention in these next two months because something big is going to happen for several of you all in this quarter. By the end of June, your situation would have flipped. Only if you believe God, I need you to put a praise right there. Yeah. Oh! Your final push. Your final push. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Come on, we're getting out of here. In the next two months, on the count of three, release your name. One, two, three. John Hanna. Yay! Your phone is about to ring. Your no is about to be turned into a yes. Your doctor report is about to come back different. You about to get your keys. Let's prophesy to each other. Tell your neighbor in the next two months, you will see results of your push. In the next two months, you will see results of your push. Too much. That's why the first quarter was hard for you. Because the enemy knew if you made it to the second quarter, we got to go, y'all.
Throw somebody the peace sign and tell them in the next two months, you're going to see God honor your push. Hope. Shut that up, Osaka. Yeah, that up, In the next two months, you will see God honor your push. We got to get out of here. It was worth the push. Look at somebody and say, Hi! In the next two months, He gonna turn your no into a yes. He gonna bring your name up. He's about to honor your push. You about to wake up early. I gotta go, y'all. Sit down. Sit down. Get your tithes and your offering in your hand. Sit down. We gotta go. It's all I see in the spirit right here. In the next two months, uh oh, before we even get to 12 hour prayer, Danny, I gotta go. Can you get your tithes in your hand? Come on. Come on. Get your tithes ready. Everybody get your tithes ready. Get your tithes ready. <laughs> and I need everybody. Come on, stand to your feet. I need you to get a, a seed in your hand, an offering. Get out my son, yo. I need you to sow something into your next two months. Can it be 23, 46, 69, or 92? This is my two month seed. That God's about to honor my push. You can text and give. You can go on the app and give. You can either give 23, 46, 69, or 92. To whom much is given much is required. Come on, get your seed. Oh, Baba Sha. We got to go. Lift your seed up to the Lord. Get on my son. Those online you could give. Those of you that have envelopes on your way out the building to your right and your left, you're going to sow. But if I've ever pushed you to sow, I want you to sow tonight, today. Because something is about to happen with that seed in your hand. Yeah. Come on, hold that seed up and say, in the next two months, I'm going to reap from this right here. Lift your seed up and repeat after me. I'm going to tie that together. And I am blessed beyond measure. I have more than enough. I'm living in my overflow. Come on, say this. I am living in Ephesians 3.20 for the rest of my life. Consider yourself dismissed. Everybody else, give me a minute. Because we're about to dance for the next 60 seconds. 
Because something big is about to happen. Consider yourself dismissed. Can I get at least 20 dancers to meet me on the altar? I need to turn up for about 60 seconds. Let's go.
got this. You got this, Sakrita. You got this, Sakrita. This is how you always win. 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 YouTube family, I am excited that June the 9th, Friday, June the 9th, we are having our annual mid-year cry, which is a 12-hour prayer meeting. Hey, I can't do this without you. I need as many of you all that can to book yourselves to come to Chicago. In this building, 12 hours, 12 noon to 12 midnight. Now, I know that everyone can't make it, but guess what? We'll be live right here on YouTube. Why? Because we're family. And I want to make sure that we stay together by praying together. Let's give you the date again. June the 9th, 12 noon to 12 midnight. The mid-year cry. The God of a breakthrough. Let's go.